Okay, so today we're going to analyze the impact of high court interpretations on the division of lawmaking powers. Uh, again, for the structure of this question, it's an analyzed question. Uh, so you need to look at the overall impact of high court interpretations on the division of lawmaking powers. Uh, you need to look at some factors that increase the impact of high court interpretations uh, and also factors that limit the impact of high court interpretations. So you really need to have uh, both sides of this uh, and again, probably one mark for each uh, point that you make. Uh, overall, uh, high court interpretations have uh, tended to have a large impact on the division of powers, uh, especially in comparison to referendums and referral of powers. Uh, in particular, they've shifted uh, power from the states uh, towards the Commonwealth Parliament in a number of uh, different areas. Some factors that have increased the impact of the High Court interpretations. Uh, firstly, the, the first uniform tax case enabled the Commonwealth to become the sole income tax collector, and we looked at that case uh, previously. Uh, that increased the financial dominance of the Commonwealth over the states, uh, and that meant that the Commonwealth uh, is then able to have influence in residual powers uh, by placing conditions on the money they granted to the state. So basically, uh, now, because of first uniform tax case, uh, the Commonwealth uh, collects the vast amount of tax revenue. They then give that money to the states, uh, and when they do so, they're able to place conditions on how that money is spent uh, in residual powers. It greatly increases uh, the power of the Commonwealth over the states. Another factor is that the Franklin Dam case uh, allowed the Commonwealth to make laws in areas uh, traditionally thought of as residual powers uh, if they could demonstrate they were using their external affairs power uh, when enacting obligations of an, inter of an international treaty. Again, we saw that in the Franklin Dam case uh, where the Commonwealth was able to make uh, or interfere in an area, uh, normally a residual power, the environment, uh, because they declared the Franklin River a World Heritage Site. Uh, again, that uh, greatly increased uh, the power of the Commonwealth over the states. Some of the factors that limit the impact of High Court interpretations uh, include the fact that really there's been quite few uh, High Court cases that have actually changed uh, the division of lawmaking powers, but the ones that have have tended to have quite a, a large impact. Uh, the High Court can't actually change the words in the Constitution, so its role uh, is limited to just, just interpreting uh, the Constitution, so that does uh, limit the impact that High Court interpretations have. Uh, also, the High Court has to wait for a relevant case to be brought before it, uh, which requires a person with standing uh, to bring the case to the High Court, so they can't just uh, interpret the Constitution whenever they feel the need, they need to wait for a relevant case uh, to come before them. Uh, and it's very expensive and it's also very time consuming for a person to take a case to the High Court. Uh, so again, that means that quite few cases uh, relating to uh, the balance of power, the division of power, actually make it to the High Court. Uh, and again, that uh, limits the impact that High Court interpretations have on the division of powers. And that's it.